Hydrocephalus was for a long time referred to as being water on the brain. We can have some conditions that are benign and you don't really have to do anything with, and there are other conditions that you absolutely have to do something with. For instance, you can have children that have excess fluid on the brain when they're infants that come from a delayed development of the ability to drain off that fluid, to reabsorb it. And that's sort of like having the drain in your sink, not being able to keep up with the faucet. That eventually will recover between 15 and 24 months, and those kids will have a big head for a while. They may have some developmental delay for a while, but they don't need an operation. And the most common reason why we get hydrocephalus in this country is because of the number of premature births. And prematurity is associated with developing brain hemorrhages. And those brain hemorrhages often lead to either blockages in the fluid, either from one compartment to another, or it blocks up the reabsorptive capacity. But one way or another, there's more fluid being made than is being drained off. Other conditions can be birth defects that cause a block in part of the passageway from one compartment to another. Sometimes it can be tumors, but there are all kinds of things that can cause excess fluid in the head. Children with hydrocephalus, if they're babies and can't complain of headache, will sometimes be irritable and not feed appropriately. And one of the things that we also see if the baby's very young is an abnormally rapid growth of the baby's head. You might feel the soft spot at the top of your baby's head becoming very, very firm and bulging, even if the baby's not actively crying or upset about something. And then in older children who no longer have a soft spot, and their heads can't grow as quickly as babies' heads grow, they'll frequently complain of headaches. Your child might have a headache that wakes him or her up in the middle of the night and might be associated with vomiting. Your child may have a headache that's worse in the morning but gets better through the day and then gets worse in the morning again when you get that child up. And in very bad cases where the hydrocephalus has gotten very bad, you may not be able to wake your child up appropriately and that child may be sleepy through the day. And if any of these symptoms occur, it's very important that you go to a healthcare professional as fast as you can. Shunting is basically creating some pathway to move the fluid from one place to another. And that is, is that there's a tube that's placed into the fluid-filled space in the brain. It's routed underneath the scalp and the skin and classically gets put into the abdomen. That space around the intestines and all the organs there then reabsorbs that fluid and it goes back into the bloodstream. If you have a child who has a tumor and that tumor caused hydrocephalus, sometimes treating the tumor can fix the hydrocephalus. And in some cases, we can have children present where part of their brain wasn't formed quite right or strictured down later on in their life and caused a blockage. And in those cases, sometimes we're able to go in and find a way to go around that blockage. Another option is doing a procedure that's called an endoscopic third ventriculostomy. And an endoscopic third ventriculostomy, the best analogy that I can give to that is in your bathroom sink, you have the main drain. And if it starts to fill up, there's a little hole up underneath the lip of that drain there that if the water gets high enough, it'll drain out from that extra hole. We create a bypass for that fluid to be able to get through. Now that's only beneficial with kids that have a particular kind of hydrocephalus, but we are combining it with something else to give a new option for kids who have hydrocephalus, even in those preemie babies. And that is a combination of the third ventriculostomy as well as what's called choroid plexus cauterization. There are tissues that are within the brain that make spinal fluid. That tissue is cauterized so that we reduce the production of that fluid, as well as creating that extra drainage point. It doesn't work as well as it does in kids that have other conditions. I think nationally right now, it works in about one out of six kids that have that. But for the total number of kids that develop hydrocephalus from the bleeding from prematurity, that significantly reduces the number of kids that are required to have shunts. 